Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be reacting to Tristan Talks Putin interview with FX. What you should know. Guys, let's get straight into this. Carlson, it's only like 14, 15 million on YouTube, but it has like hundreds of millions on Twitter, yeah. on X. Yeah. Like, you know, YouTube tried to suppress that interview hardcore. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? And I guarantee you the Biden administration was probably behind that as well because they don't want people to know the truth. And, oh, I didn't get to ask you. So what's your thoughts on that interview? Well, did you see Because you're a historian yourself. You know a yeah. lot about Russian history. I mean, you know, you're learning Russian right now. Oh, I am learning. You know a lot about the culture. Am, you know a lot about that, right this now. region of the world. I am learning Russian right now. My, my thoughts on the interview is my whole perspective on the situation I can talk about in, in depth and what i think the americans need to understand is this and what people who don't know the ukraine russia relationship need to understand is this i believe it was a very nasty trick for the west to make ukrainians think that they're one of us because lots of countries to get a little bit boring there are countries like kazakhstan for example kazakhstan is a neighbor of russia mm -hmm. everyone speaks russian in kazakhstan yep. mm. they are they're, they're they share a big border mm -hmm. they know russia's got one one massive thing going for it, unlimited energy so what kazakhstan does is okay we're basically russians we're not we're slightly different mm -hmm. but we speak their language Former we're Soviet Union. yeah we're basically we're, we're basically russian so what we'll do is and shout out to all my kazakh friends i know you're not actually russians and Kaz kazakhs and russians are far far more different than ukrainians and russians they say look we're part of this part of the world let's team up with our big brother next door yeah, let's use their good cheap energy and let's build this amazing country and kazakhstan has gone from a third world shithole to a real fucking economically powerful country in a very short period of time because they made friends with who was close to them and i feel like the greatest trick that's been pulled on ukrainian people ukrainian people who, nice. who by the way russian is their <laughs> first language most ukrainians speak russian as a first language when i was born ukraine was not and i know ukrainians will argue about this oh well it was ukraine translates in russian to like on the edge or on the border on the border of what the russian empire mm -hmm. it's essentially it's essentially a, a russian state and the greatest trick that's ever been pulled on Ukrainian people, especially the young ones, is for the Americans and the Canadians and the British the, and the Germans, the NATO people, to make you think as a Ukrainian, you can look in the mirror and think, yeah, I'm not Russian. I'm like the Americans. Hmm. I'm like a Frenchman. Dangle that no, NATO no, membership. No, you're not. Hmm. No, you are not like a Frenchman or an American or a Brit. You're not. And they will never see you as one of them. To us and to Americans, to a lot of people, you're just Russians. So team up with your big brother next door. Use the cheap energy and create the best country ever. You got the best agricultural farmland. There was so much untapped potential in that country. Yeah. However, they were psyoped into thinking, yeah, yeah, the West, that's our people. Look at where you are on a fucking map. <laughs> you are not the West. And it was a fucking sick trick that they pulled on the Ukrainian people. And even young Ukrainian people nowadays I meet who- They dangled NATO yeah, membership yeah. to them for oh, so long. Yeah, well, why can't we join the West? Look at the fucking map. You're mm. not the West. You are, in fact, a Russian state. You speak Russian. You have great relations with it. Well, you do used to have great relations with the Russians. And yeah- Before it, Zelensky, yeah, who was so, it before? Um, uh, Poroshenko. Yes. And then the guy who began with Y before that, who pulled the coup. But uh, anyway, long, yeah. story, long story short, I watched the interview. I watched the Tucker Putin interview, and I think that it was a very important. Putin did two things. One, he displayed total indifference, and there is power in indifference. Yeah. Total power. Total indifference is total power. If a girl's trying to get you back and you really don't give a shit, or you're arguing with a girl and you really don't give a shit, you've never been in a more powerful position, ever. If someone's trying to do a business deal with you, if you're trying to pitch me for a business deal and I really don't give a shit about making money or doing the business deal, I have the position of total power because I'm indifferent. Yes. Putin displayed the fact that he is totally indifferent with the situation. Uh, ask your leaders. Uh, well, if you want to call me, fine, but I don't have any need to call you. I mean... <laughs> like he did one didn't give a shit two i like the fact that he bored american audiences with these long explanations of how the kingdom of poland lithuania was trying to influence i knew this stuff already was trying to influence the ukrainian state to have their own national identity when in fact they were essentially russians the whole time kiev was a very important russian city a lot of the great russian saints in the orthodox church uh saint catherine of kiev were people who were born in modern day ukraine when you watch the movie rocky four they tell you Ivan Drago is a Russian, yes? 
If you read his stats and watch the follow-up movies, Creed and Creed Creed 2, where they have Ivan Drago in it again, he lives in modern-day Ukraine. Oh, how come when Rocky IV came out, he's Russian? Russian, 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 Russian. But nowadays, because to follow his story, he's in modern-day Ukraine, which is part of the former USSR. Was he not Russian when you watched Rocky IV? That movie's only a little bit older than I am. Yeah. So, like, they've psyoped... Came out in 84, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they yeah. psyop everyone. Wow. And that's a, that's a thing to remember. So Putin's long, boring history lesson... I think was very, very important because if Americans didn't sit there and drool through it, saying, oh, Putin's a bad guy, let me wait for him. I watched it like through. twice. It was very yeah, entertaining. I interesting. That, I think that, that it, part. It, it gives a very good explanation of, of to what the region is. And I have lots of Ukrainian friends, lots. And I was the man on the border helping all the Ukrainian refugees yes. come over. And lots of refugees. Uh, and lots of Ukrainians share the sentiments of the Russian people who think, why the fuck was NATO involved in our country? Why the fuck? Did we overthrow the government and give the people no Russian representation within their own parliament? Why the fuck were ethnic Russians attacked by the Ukrainian government in 2014 for years before the, the Russians bass. came in? Yeah, so a lot of Ukrainians share my sentiments. And I know some of you don't, and I'm not trying to offend you, because I have nothing but respect to the young, brave Ukrainian men who are the ones who volunteer, at least, going out and marching off to war. But you're all going to fucking die for nothing. And it's sad, and it actually breaks. You made a good point. The money can't save you. The money can't save you. Money and people. And this is the American delusion. Send them more money. Send them more money. Zelensky send them more money. Is taking if, it. Eventually, even if Zelensky isn't taking it, let's say they're giving every soldier a very expensive gun. They're just going to yeah. die with expensive guns in their hands, and that doesn't console the families, and that doesn't console the mothers who lose their sons and the children who lose their fathers. It consoles fucking nobody, and you'll get to a point where there are no more men left to fight. Dollar bills can't fire weapons. You need men on the ground at the end of the day. And I think Ukrainians are actually getting sick of it. I think they're getting sick of it. They're trying to round them up, throw them in vans, send them off to the front. My friend's stepfather was mobilized against his will. And it's really fucking And he's sad. how old? 50? Yeah, he's 51. And, it, and it's really fucking Born sad. 51. So Putin's interview was very important because he let the world know what's actually going on. These are things that I've been... I mean, I have tweets going out way before the Putin interview saying, well, the war started in 2014. It was a civil war between the Ukrainians. The Russians stepped in. I've said all this stuff. And uh, I think Putin's interview was very important. Isn't it crazy it's how Americans like didn't know they think the war started in 2022 or whatever it was but they don't realize that it actually started yeah, year eight before. years before yeah. eight years before tristan why yeah. did he speak only russian and not english why would he speak english why would he risk b making one mistake when he speaks perfect russian he does speak english by the way he speaks yeah. english he a lot speaks, of people don't know that, yeah, that he speaks, he speaks english. english he speaks yeah. german he speaks a bunch of different languages i feel like putin is uh he's a very very pragmatic man he's a very deep thinker he's a chess player um, judo black belt as well very intelligent man i feel like he doesn't ever want to f be in a position where anyone can say he's been misunderstood okay I, th I think the only words he's ever said in english on camera were at the beginning of the russian winter olympics where he says welcome to russia i think that's the only words in english he's ever been caught saying on camera but yeah. it's it's well known that he does speak perfect english yeah he's former kgb yeah but it's his language you come to my country to speak to me about topics that involve me in my country i'm going to speak to you in my language it's a power move yeah and and, and, and good for him and putin's not perfect no politician is perfect however americans do need to understand the history of the region and i liked the interview because he educated people as to the history of the most region. americans don't know yeah and in the mainstream media of course he says basic stuff oh i have no i have no interest in attacking poland and starting world war three i have no interest in invading lithuania and starting world war three why would i do that i'm not stupid that's crazy why would i try and start a war with nato that's going to go nuclear i'm not going to do that the bbc the next day putin clearly wants to invade the rest of the world after ukraine yeah because yeah. they're, they're trying to scare people into ponying up their tax dollars and voluntarily and willingly giving their money away to these young men who are just going to die with their expensive weapons if they get the money in the fucking first place and it's sad it's really really sad and it breaks my heart because it's one country over yeah and yeah. these these and We're right and, here yeah and i've got nothing against the ukrainian man or the ukrainian people nothing um, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, you know I think at this point Russia has something like twenty five percent of uh, of Ukraine, mo mostly mostly Eastern racial or yeah. well, ethnic Russians anyway. Yes, they Crimea, took the areas they Donbass. wanted. Um, do you foresee that they're gonna or continue to advance on, or they're gonna probably just keep it as is and let, let Ukraine have the rest? I, I mean, they're willing to negotiate, but Zelensky doesn't want to fucking they wanted negotiate. To negotiate. That's nothing too. The Boone wants my, to negotiate. He wants more money. My my opinion on the situation is as follows. I believe what Vladimir Putin says, not what he said in the Tucker interview, actually, but what he says to, to his own state media, because I listen to a lot of what he says. When he said, for eight years, they were committing a genocide against ethnic Russians within Ukraine, and I jumped in to stop them. 
the fact that he didn't attack Kiev with full vigor, the fact that he didn't attack Lviv and these other cities with full vigor, the fact that he's not positioning himself to take the Ukrainian areas where the, I guess the Ukrainian language is the first language and there are no ethnic Russians there, the fact that he immediately took all the areas that are filled with ethnic Russians, fortified it, and didn't seem to give a shit about moving any further, I think he made a point of saying even though they could i think that they got hypersonic missile they got all the stuff that we got guys russia, in america russia could conquer ukraine yeah, yeah. Very they, easily. i've i said if, like yeah. they could have done it in a day yeah they could have done what america does airstrikes for one or two days yeah. and but then again, but again that includes killing i remember lots of innocent ukrainians and the russian government i don't think sees ukrainians as a different people he sees it as russian people with a corrupt government yeah he doesn't want to kill women and children of course red pill said before he passed so he said listen Putin could definitely decimate Ukraine and take it over 100%. But his people are there. The Russians yeah. are there. Yeah, why, yeah, why, dec kill yeah why decimate Ukraine? And, yeah. he, and he looks at it because, uh, you know, obviously he was there before with, with the former Soviet Union. He looks at it like, I don't want any Russian. Like, he looks at it like, we're all, all my Russians are separated in different parts of the world, etc. Yes. And I don't want them suffering anywhere, which is yes. why he stepped in with the Ukraine thing and then the NATO yeah. advancements. To, to, for all the Americans that always get confused, like, why did he invade, blah, blah, blah. I always give the example of if China you know, started setting up in Mexico City. Yes. And started putting biological weapons there. Yes. And started coming closer and closer. And you had told, we had agreements with Mexico that they would never be able to be there and yep. set up and everything else like that. And China was there. We would invade China within a day. Well, yeah. let, well let's, say, let's take a real world historical example that did in fact happen. In, during the Cold War, I believe it was 1962, 1962 or 1967, I can't remember exactly which year it was, I think 1962, uh, Russia said, well, Cuba's an independent country that could do anything it likes, it's a sovereign state. John so F. I'm Kennedy. Gonna, yeah, so I'm going to put some weapons in Cuba. And John F. Kennedy mobilized the entire American Navy to blockade Cuba, and the Russian ships, there was a standoff, they ended up leaving. But the Americans were ready to go to fucking war to stop the Russians Cuban encroaching, missile crisis, encro guys. Yeah, encroaching too close to their territory. It was called the Cuban Missile Crisis, you're completely correct. So... When people say, oh, well, Ukraine's an independent state, they should be allowed to have American weapons and missiles and bases next to Russia and Ukraine if they want. They could join NATO if they want. Cool, well, then Cuba's an independent state. In the 1960s, we should let them fucking put nuclear warheads in Cuba. Isn't that an independent country? What fucking right do the Americans have to tell the Cubans to do anything? So as a real-world example of what America does when you encroach too close to, to their territory... We've tried to kill Fidel Castro hundreds of times. Exactly. we tried to assassinate him. We've tried all the shit we honey can with Cuba. Honey pots. Yeah. So, uh, and it just, it just hasn't worked. So that's what America does under the same circumstances. And if you think if Russia hadn't pushed the, to the American Navy and tried to get to Cuba, there wouldn't have been hot war. There absolutely would have been. Because that's the nature, the defensive nature of any country that wishes to live in peace. Take it a step further. Can't, um, the intelligence community wanted to set up attacks, fake attacks, by the way, in the United States and say that it was false flags. Say it was Cuban, Cuban separatists. extremists, separatists that were committing these attacks to get them to go to war with Cuba. Yeah, yeah for the military industrial complex. Like guys, money. we've we've like, uh, and this is a reason why. And Kenny didn't want to do this shit. Big reason why he got killed. Whole yeah. other conversation. Oh, that was a lone madman who lived in Russia before. Don't oh worry. yeah, Harry no, it Oswald. Wasn't, it wasn't the CIA. Yeah. Hmm. Oh uh, man. Speaking of uh, politics and what's going on in the world, top chases. Good evening, gentlemen. Guys, this was an amazing interview, and I actually watched the Putin interview, and I thought it was educated, let's say, first of all. And I have some Ukraine friends, and yes, when I was making Russian videos, when it was started, like, I met some, I talked with a lot of people, and people shared their opinion with me, and there was a lady I talked with, and she said, Russia isn't totally as fought, like, Russia... People are actually killed in Donbass, and that's where the war started. Because, like, I won't, some people started sending me two pages of the war that happened 2014 in Donbass. And how like, I got to the point that, oh, I feel we're blaming the wrong people here. And people find it offensive that I was supporting Russia at that time. And I, I, I feel a war should never have occurred. And I feel it should be resolved, like, peacefully. And I, I, I wouldn't say that Russia is right because Russia have the reasons of doing what they're doing. But like I people are being killed. So when people are being killed, there are some things you just can't say. If not, it's gonna trigger emotion. And that's why I really won't say anybody's right at this war. And by I would say Russia is not totally wrong, but if you want to think about it, you, you can see the reasons of doing what they what they did. Like the reasons is clear. Okay, I tell you what you think about this. Just like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.